This is our cranial nerve examination with Triana playing the client, Aleda playing the clinician, and Heidi playing the narrator. First, the clinician is going to be testing the olfactory nerve, which is in charge of olfaction or smell. A lesion here would cause ipsilateral loss of olfaction or anosmia. Okay, can you please close your eyes and plug your left nostril? I'm going to give you something to smell, and if you can smell it, can you just tell me what it is? Okay, please plug your right nostril, and I'm going to repeat the same thing, so if you smell it, please let me know. Chocolate. Okay. The client has no abnormalities with this cranial nerve. Now the clinician is going to be testing the optic nerve, which is in charge of vision, and a lesion here would cause ipsilateral blindness or anopsia. First, the clinician is going to ask the client about her visual acuity. Have you had any issues with your vision lately? No. Have you had any difficulty seeing near or far? No. Now the clinician is going to test the visual field of the client in all four quadrants. Now I'm going to test your visual field. If you could please stand up for me. Sure. Okay, please cover your right eye. I'm going to cover my left and then focus on my nose. When you see my finger, um, tell me. again. I see it. For a third time. I see it. And for a fourth time. I see it. Okay. Now the clinician is going to have the client test her visual acuity in the opposite eye. Okay, so now we're going to test your other eye. Can you please cover your left eye and I'm going to cover my right eye and we're going to repeat the process. So when you first see my finger, please let me know. I see it. Okay. I see it. For a third time. I see it. For a fourth time. I see it. Now the clinician is going to test the pupillary light reflex, which has a sensory pathway from cranial nerve 2, the optic nerve, and a motor pathway from cranial nerve 3, ocular motor. The clinician will shine a beam of light into the pupil of the client, and if both pathways are normal, the pupil will constrict, which is the direct response, and the contralateral pupil will also constrict, known as a consensual response. Okay, so first I'm going to test each one of your eyes individually. So stare straight ahead and I'm going to shine a beam of light into them, okay? Mm -hmm. The clinician is now going to perform the swinging light test where the clinician will swing the light back and forth from each eye and the pupils will alternately constrict. Okay, so stay staring straight ahead. I'm going to just test both of your eyes at the same time now so you can see just Beam of light, just stare straight ahead. Okay. The clinician will now be testing the ocular motor nerve. The pupillary light reflex done for cranial nerve 2 also applies for cranial nerve 3. The clinician will now be testing for eyelid position and accommodation. Damage of the cranial nerve 3 would result in ipsilateral ptosis or drooping of the eyelid. The clinician will check for this by asking the patient to look directly ahead and making sure that their eyelids are not drooping over the pupil and that the eyelid position is the same on both sides. If there is no lesion to the ocular motor nerve, there should be no sign of ptosis. Can you please stare straight ahead for me? I'm going to look at your eyelids. Mm -hmm. The clinician notices no sign of ptosis. Next, the clinician will test for accommodation, which is what allows the eye to focus on nearby objects. The clinician will ask the patient to follow their finger with their eyes as the clinician moves their finger from the distance away from the patient's nose towards the patient's nose. If the patient has an undamaged ocular motor nerve, their eyes should converge and their pupils should constrict as the clinician's finger moves closer to their nose.
accommodation is normal for this client. Now the clinician will draw a large H in the air in front of the client and will ask the client to follow her finger with her eyes. This exercise will also be done with cranial nerves four and six as this exercise is assessing eye movements. Okay, please follow the finger. There is no damage with the ocular motor nerve. Trochlear nerve was assessed along with cranial nerve 3 and 6 by using the drawing of the letter H in front of the patient to assess eye movements. No abnormalities were noticed with this nerve. The clinician will now be testing the trigeminal nerve. The trigeminal nerve has both sensory and motor components. The trigeminal nerve contains several sensory modalities which need to be tested. These modalities are tested bilaterally at the forehead, cheek, and jaw. If the trochlear nerve is undamaged, both sides will be equally as sensitive. The discriminatory touch pathway is tested by touching the skin with the sharp end of a pointed object. The clinician will gently touch the patient in all three bilateral modalities with a toothpick to test for touch discrimination. The pain and temperature pathway is tested by using a hot or cold object and touching the skin with it. The clinician will do this by touching the patient with an ice pack. The clinician will test the simple touch pathway by touching the patient with a cotton ball. Okay, for this part, I'm going to touch you. Um, this is what the prick is going to feel like. So please close your eyes, and if you feel a touch of any part of your face, please let me know. Feel it. Feel it. Feel it. Feel it. Feel it. Feel it. Okay, so now I'm going to show you what this feels like. Okay, so if you feel this or any part of your face again, let me know. Please close your eyes. I feel it. I feel it. Feel it. Feel it. Feel it. Feel it. Okay, for this last one, again, that's what it feels like. Okay, please close your eyes. Let me know if you feel it in any part of your face. Feel it. There were no abnormalities noticed. Now that the clinician has finished testing the sensory components of the trigeminal nerve, she will begin testing the motor components. The clinician will palpate the masseter and temporalis muscle of the patient bilaterally and ask them to shut their jaw tightly. If there is no lesion to the trigeminal nerve, the clinician should feel these muscles contract on each side of the patient. The clinician then asks the patient to open their jaw. The clinician checks for deviation of the jaw to a weak side. Now the clinician will ask the patient to move their jaw to the left and try to force the jaw to move to the midline position. The clinician then repeats this process with the right side of the jaw. If the trigeminal nerve is functioning properly, the clinician should not be able to forcibly move the patient's jaw back to the midline position. The final thing the clinician tests is the jaw jerk reflex. The clinician asks the patient to open their mouth slightly. The clinician taps the middle of the chin with a reflex hammer. If there is no lesion to the trigeminal nerve, the jaw should have a sudden slight closing as a reflex reaction to being struck with a reflex hammer. Okay, so for this last part, I'm going to put my hands on the side of your face. So please open your jaw and then shut it as hard as you can. Um, and then can you open your jaw, please? And then can you move it to your left? Okay, can you open your jaw again and move it to the right? Perfect. Um, now can you open your mouth slightly and then I'm going to tap you in the middle of your chin with this reflex hammer. There were no lesions on the trigeminal nerve. The abducens nerve has already been assessed by drawing the large H in the air in front of the client and asking the client to follow the clinician's finger with her eyes and there were no lesions of the abducens nerve. The clinician is now going to be testing the facial nerve. First, the examiner is going to observe the client's facial movements when she is talking. Next, in order to examine the frontalis muscle, the clinician will ask the client to raise her eyebrows while the clinician tries to lower them. Then the clinician will ask the client to close her eyes as tightly as she can while the clinician tries to open the client's eyes. This action should result in a burrowing of the client's eyelashes. 
Next, the clinician is going to test the buccinator muscle and orbicularis oris muscle by having the client firmly press their lips together. If there is full strength during this task, the clinician will be unable to separate the client's lips. The last assessment for the facial nerve that the clinician will ask the client to perform is to assess the platysma muscle by asking the client to clench their jaw. If there is no lesion here, the clinician should be able to see the muscle tightening from the mandible towards the clavicle. Just tell me a little bit about your day. Today I went shopping, my favorite thing to do, and I found my Halloween costume, so I'm ready for Halloween. Okay, can you please raise your eyebrows? I'm going to try to close them. Okay, next, can you close your eyes as tightly as you can, and I'm going to try to open them. Next, can you press your lips firmly together as tight as you can, and I'm going to try to open them. And then finally, can you smile as hard as you can, clench that jaw. Perfect, thank you. No lesions were noted for this cranial nerve. Now the clinician is going to be testing the vestibular cochlear nerve. For the vestibular cochlear nerve, the clinician will be assessing the hearing and equilibrium of the patient. The clinician will ask the patient if they have had any changes in their hearing and if they have any concerns regarding their hearing acuity. In order to test the client's balance, the clinician will have the client stand straight up and walk towards her at a normal pace to see if there are any issues with the client's balance. If there is a lesion of vestibular cochlear, the client will have ipsilateral deafness and a loss of equilibrium. Okay, can you please close your eyes? I'm gonna stand behind you, and then when you hear a sound, just raise your hand, okay? Okay, have you had any changes in your hearing lately? Not at this time. You don't have any concerns with your hearing? No. Okay, now I'm gonna have you stand up and walk towards me so I can check your balance. Perfect, thank you. The client had normal hearing and equilibrium. The glossopharyngeal nerve is going to be assessed by having the client open their mouth and stick out their tongue. The clinician will then take a tongue depressor and lightly touch the left side of the upper pharynx and then the right side of the upper pharynx. If the pharyngeal wall contracts, there is no lesion affecting this nerve. Can you please open your mouth and stick out your tongue? Here, I'm gonna take this tongue depressor and touch the right and left side of your upper pharynx. There you go. <laughs> there was no lesion of the glossopharyngeal nerve. Clinician is now going to be assessing the vagus nerve. The clinician will assess the soft palate and uvula for symmetry. Any deviations might suggest damage of the vagus nerve. Then the clinician will ask the patient to say ah to observe uvula movement upward. Unilateral paresis of the superior pharyngeal constrictor results in deviation of the uvula to the normal side and also a pull of the posterior pharyngeal wall towards the intact side. Clinician already assessed patient's gag reflex in the glossopharyngeal nerve test. Then the clinician will ask the patient to cough to check for damage. Clinician will also ask the patient to swallow to check for coughing or delayed swallow. Can you please open your mouth? I'm going to look into it and this time I'm going to use the light. Okay, can you cough? <coughs> and can you swallow? Say gulp. Okay, thank you. For the client, the vagus nerve was functioning normally. Now the clinician is going to be assessing the accessory nerve. The accessory nerve supplies the sternocleidomastoid and the trapezius muscle. Each should be tested separately because it's possible to have a partial accessory nerve palsy. Clinician will ask the patient to shrug their shoulders and resist her pushing down on them. Then the clinician will ask the patient to turn their head to one side and resist the clinician pushing it to the other side. Okay, can you shrug your shoulders for me? And push down. Okay, can you turn your head to the left? Can you turn your head to the right? There is no lesion of the accessory nerve. The last cranial nerve the clinician will be assessing is the hypoglossus nerve. The clinician will inspect the tongue of the client at rest for evidence of fasciculations or atrophy. 
The clinician will ask the patient to protrude their tongue to see if there is a lesion of the hypoglossus nerve. The clinician will then place their finger on the patient's cheek and ask the client to push their tongue against their finger to check for tongue weakness. The clinician should not be able to move the tongue to the midline of the patient if both genioglossy muscles are functioning normally. Okay, first I'm going to observe your tongue at rest, so if you could please open your mouth. Now, could you please stick out your tongue? Okay, now I'm going to place my finger on your cheek. Press against my finger with your tongue. All right, now we're going to try it on the other side. Okay, thanks. The tongue was functioning normally for this cranial nerve.